So today we're going to start talking about your first major project for this class. It's a radio podcast project, and if you remember from the syllabus, each of the projects of the main projects in this class are worth 40 points, about 40 points, which is about 7% of your total grade in the class. So the podcast project right now is going to be one in which we start working as journalists, and as a journalist, you're going to feel deadline pressure, so I will be giving you deadlines. You have to complete certain parts of this project by certain dates, and that will be play a key role in your grading as well. So for this project, we are going to be working with the story idea that you pitched to me in assignment number three. So you will have had to have received a grade from me as you all received some input from me, what would make it an actual story that you could do. So as we're going through the details of this particular project, the radio news podcast, I want you to be keeping in the back of your heads the topic that you told me you wanted to work on and that I approved for you. Think about those three stories that you listened to in the first part of the assignment. Think about how they were paced, how you heard the reporter's voice at some time narrating something. Think about how you heard the person who they were interviewing, their voice, and how it became gave some credence to the story, gave some emotional impact to the story. Think about the natural sound they used to help tell the story, and think about perhaps the music that they used every once in a while for transitions or to set the mood. Those are the type of stories that you are going to be creating. Remember that the narrator, which is you, was telling a story. They're not reading facts. They've written a script in which they tell the story about somebody and something or some issue. And they told that story utilizing sound bites of people who were involved in that story in various ways. They might have had an expert talking about why it was significant, and they had observers involved in that topic. Remember how they drew your attention in the way they told the story and the sound that they added to the piece. That's what you are going to be replicating when you do this project of a news podcast. What I'd like to do is first have you listen to an example of a podcast, and then we'll figure out how you physically put those elements together. So I'm going to play a few minutes of a recently podcast podcast. It's called Invisibilia. And the specific one we're going to listen to is one in a series where they talk about can you change your insides by how you look on the outsides, or like if you were forced to put a smile on your face, would that make you feel happy inside? That's the topic that they were looking at in general. So I'm going to play this in a second, but what I'd like you to actually pay attention to as you're listening to is not just the story itself, which I think is kind of interesting, but also how they put this together to make it really sound like a storytelling event. So I want you to listen to how the host or the writer crafted the sentences that they wrote, and then how she actually said them, not as if she was giving a report, but more as if she was telling you a story. Also, kind of pay attention to the sound bites that she's chosen and how she's intermixed them with her words, the sound bite, her words, the sound bite. What you're probably going to notice is those sound bites are short. They're anywhere from 3 seconds to 15 seconds long. And that's what I'd like you to be thinking about when you put yours together as well. You can use multiple sound bites, but try to keep them short. Also, I want you to listen for the natural sound at the scene. Maybe you'll hear the sound of paparazzi clicking their cameras, or you'll hear the sound of fans cheering. I want you to notice how those were mixed into the rest of the story. And then I'd like you to notice how they use the music every once in a while to change the mood. When they move from one sentence to another, they either used it as a transition or they used it to get you to feel what they were trying to say during that particular sentence. So let's listen now to the following three or four minutes with our observant ears. When he was in college, the thing that annoyed Brett Cohen the most was celebrity culture. There's so many people who are famous nowadays for doing absolutely nothing, just for living and driving cars and wearing clothes, showing up at events, walking the red carpet, putting out a sex tape. Oh. Plenty of us have felt this way. But one day, noting the intensity of worship a single reality star could get. 30 million followers on Instagram. Brett 
had a devious idea. <laughs> a way he thought would prove to us all just what celebrity-worshipping suckers we all are. I said, well, what if we just created like a fake celebrity entourage? What if he and his friends just manufactured all the trappings of celebrity and then just stuck Brett in the middle of it? And eventually that evolved into, let's do that and walk through Times Square on a, you know, a busy Friday night. And let's just see how many people actually will think I'm famous. Let me see if I could instantly manufacture fame. So a few days later, Brett goes onto Craigslist and finds a whole bunch of big guys who are willing to play his bodyguards. And he gets a friend to play his assistant and a whole swarm of people to play the paparazzi. Basically, anyone who owned a camera with a flash was qualified to be a paparazzi. And then the day came. It was a very hot day, and Brett, who's normally kind of schlubby in sweatpants and a T-shirt, he cleaned himself up. I got a pair of really tight jeans. Big sunglasses. An Italian button-down shirt that I would absolutely never wear elsewhere. Spiked hair. My mom put a little bit of makeup on me. And then he and his entourage headed to Midtown Manhattan. They slipped into the NBC building, headed right back out the revolving doors. As though I just maybe got off of Jimmy Fallon. Maybe I was just a guest on the show. And... People go crazy. This is actual tape from the day. His friend Edward filmed it. In it, you can see Brett trying to walk down the block, but circles of fans keep surrounding him. In fact, he can't get half a block without a mob forming around him. Edward stands next to him, interviewing people. Do you know Brett Cohen? Yeah. Where do you know him from? Uh, he's a Spider-Man? Yeah. 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 He's a really, very good actor. You, you liked him there? Yeah, yeah. And then there were the groupies, the adoring and very attractive groupies. Guys, what was it like meeting Brett? Oh, I love him! 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 I just say that he's beautiful. You know, not to, not to say anything about those girls, but I definitely think I could have gotten any of their numbers or, you know, hung out with them. I'm not saying anything else would have happened, but, like, I, I, I think I definitely had a little bit more pull there than I normally would. And then, a few hours into the night, something unexpected happened to Brett. It happened at a Walgreens in Midtown. It was a humid day, and Brett and his crew needed some water. So they walked into the store, and they're waiting in line. And two security guards came up to me. They said... Sir, is everything okay? I said, yes. He said, um, is there is there a problem? Like, what's going on? I said, um, I'm just buying some water. What do you mean? And then he just pointed. And about 50 to 60 people followed me in and were taking pictures of me waiting online. Me. And Brett says seeing all those people, something cracked open inside him. It was it was just really crazy. All these complete strangers were just completely fawning over me. And he knew he was supposed to feel disgust and contempt, but I was loving it. Staring into the eyes of all those adoring strangers, a new question floated into his mind. How do, I, how do I now shed this? How could he shake this off? He'd started out faking it, but now he really wanted it. Yeah. At some point in the night, this role he'd been playing, it had become him. It's sort of an irreversible thing. How do you go from being the center of attention of all these people to just like, all right, well, I want to just go home? Like, walking away from it was the hard part. And this switch that happened to Brett, that's what we're talking about today. When you take on the trappings of something, like just step into a role, can it change you more deeply on the inside? This is an idea that's really trendy right now. Fake it till you make it, power posing, that thing where you just step into a confident position and somehow that's supposed to make you feel more confident. Smile therapy, just turn your lips upwards and you'll feel more happy. Or, you know, Surround yourself with an entourage, and you'll go from being a celebrity skeptic to being a wannabe. I was just on cloud nine. I was just so happy. Oh, how ironic is that? In Brett's case, the taste for celebrity hasn't left him. 
After the video of his experiment went viral, an L.A. production company approached him to see if he wanted to host his own reality show. That show never got off the ground. But four years later, he still wants his moment of fame. Do I think it would be awesome? Yeah. I mean, I would love to give that a shot. <laughs> I love him. How could I say no to that? Yeah. How could I say no to that? This is Invisibilia. I'm Elise Spiegel. Invisibilia is a show about all of the invisible things that shape human behavior, our thoughts, emotions, beliefs. And today we ask this question. Can change happen in this way from the outside in? No, I don't know about you, but I thought that was a pretty interesting story, how it was put together. It really felt like somebody was telling me a story. So how did this reporter, we'll call her reporter for now, how did she make it interesting? Well, the first thing that she had to do is you will have interviewed at least three people, the expert, the participant, the person with direct knowledge. Let me remind you that when you are doing interviews for this assignment, you want to hold the microphone. Let's say that this is a microphone. It's actually a mouse. You want to hold it about two to four inches, let's say four to six inches away from them. You do not want it to be any further away because you won't capture good sound. You want to hold the microphone relatively close to their mouth. And when you're asking the question to the person, you want to make sure that you're not answering, asking yes and no questions. Again, you are looking for them to speak about their lives, to tell a life story, to give their emotions, to give a story about what happened to them and how this impacts the topic that you're talking about. So be sure not to ask a question um, that could start with, are you, or is this? And your questions need to start with things like, well, tell me how this happened to occur, or why do you think this is happening to you in your life? Make sure that they are open-ended questions that result in the person actually talking with you and telling you a story. You will have gathered natural sound. Again, you want to record things that are going on and view the scene around you. What I'm going to ask you to do is log all of your interviews and all of the natural sound that you've gathered. And her notes probably look something like this. Brett Cohen, here's the long version of his, what he had to say. And then after all of this was transcribed, the reporter went ahead and found just the smaller elements that she liked that she thought really would work and highlighted those in yellow. So you'll notice even though there was a large paragraph here, she only took a short portion of it. Here a very short person, may section maybe two seconds long, and here maybe one second long. In each section, she decided she could summarize what he was saying there quicker with her words than with his and took from what he was saying something that she thought would be most compelling out of everything that he was saying. After she had gone through all her logging notes, in this case it was just one person, in your case there's going to be several persons, um, highlighted the part that she thought was important, then she went ahead and used all the highlighted elements to write her script. She most probably took the highlighted elements, put them on another script, and then it would look something like this. All the highlighted items would be there, and she would write her elements around them. So while the first thing Brett said might have been, there were so many people who are famous nowadays for doing absolutely nothing, for driving and wearing clothes, or for showing up to celebrity events and walking on red carpets, she used that as a second element in the story, but she started out by saying, when he was in college, the thing that annoyed Brett Cohen the most was celebrity culture. And then she wants him to say this, and then she wants to say this portion, and then have him say this, and she would say that, and he would say this, and she would say this. And then at some point, you see, she decided to put in a music transition. She brought in some music to change the mood of what was being talked about. And then later on, when Brett said basically anyone who owned a camera with a flash was qualified to be a paparazzi, she decided that there should be the natural sound from the video camera that enhanced what he was talking about there. So she put those in her notes there. And then she said, anyone, any, and then the day came. And then the music changes with a different effect and a different mood. So this is how the whole script was written, with a sentence for her, some music notated, another sentence for her, 
back and forth with natural sound every once in a while and with music changing every once in a while. So you will use the model that we just talked about to write your script for this project. This is what it looks like when you format it yourself. You'll need to start out with an introduction paragraph or two. The introduction is either the paragraph that is read by people in a podcast before they start playing the recorded portion, or in a broadcast situation, this is the part that the anchor person would read before the reporter starts his portion of the story. So you'll need a sentence or two, then you'll need to make sure that you say your name has the story. Again, you do not record this part with your voice at all. This is for somebody else to say. Everything from the recorded portion below is the portion where your voice is edited together with the sound bites that you have. You will see that you are asked to end the story by saying, I'm your name, and then make sure your music fades out at the end. Okay, so the end of the story always has to end this way. The beginning of the story needs to have an introduction for someone else to read. In the middle of the story, besides your script and the other person's sound bite, you'll have to have notations of when there is natural sound and music transitions. So now that you understand what logging means, let me go over what this assignment is going to require of you. By Friday of this week, I'm going to ask you to complete the three interviews and the natural sound and the logging. That means you will have interviewed at least three people, the expert, the participant, the person with direct knowledge. So by Friday, again, you will have completed the interviews. You will have gathered natural sound. Again, you want to record things that are going on and view the scene around you. Also, you will be asked to take two or three photos. You can do that with your smartphone if you want or with an actual professional camera. Not, not important. These photos will be used later on when I teach you how to make a professional website for yourself. You'll be posting your podcast story on your professional website and you'll need some image to go with that. So make sure you capture a couple of uh, photographs from the scene while you're out and about. Now also by Friday, what I'm going to ask you to do is log all of your interviews and all of the natural sound that you've gathered. In addition to logging, once you've actually transcribed the interviews or the portions that are important, I'm going to ask you to go back and highlight in yellow the parts of the interviews and the natural sound elements that you think you could possibly use when you sit down to write this story. I want you to keep in mind that you're going to use your natural sound more than once, probably four or four times you will be required to use it throughout the story. So try to grab a lot of different types of natural sound when you're out and highlight several of those instances on, on your form that you're going to turn in on Friday. Also, uh, by Friday night, what I'd like you to do is go online and see if you can find some music that you think would work well in the background for transitions while you're telling your story. When you have completed gathering the interviews, gathering your natural sound, gathering your photos, finding the music, and logging all of the material that I've just talked about, this will be the end of part one of this week's assignment. So you're going to complete this by Friday night. When you have done all these elements, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and copy and paste this sentence, or you could write it any way you want, um, on Moodle. You'll see um, News Podcast Project Part 1 due by Friday at midnight, Part 2 by Sunday at midnight. You'll go in there, you'll add a new discussion topic, and you can just copy right in there, I have completed um, whatever the sentence was. You can copy that. Uh, you copy it in there, you go there, and this by Friday night, you'll copy and paste it and then post it to the forum. And once you've posted it to the forum, Moodle's going to document what time you did that so I know if you've completed this part of the assignment by deadline. Okay, so by Friday night, you're going to get all the preliminary work done. And that is going to give you through the weekend to do part two of this assignment, which is actually to write the script. So you are going to go back and look at the logging notes that you have, the parts that were highlighted that you want to use for um, 
for your sound bites in the story, and at least four to five times you're going to use natural sound. Okay? Remember the natural sound that I'm asking you to use. You'll not put that under the sound bites of other people talking. You can put that natural sound under your narration, or you could put that natural sound as a transition from one thing to another. You can bring up the natural sound full so people could hear the sound perhaps of a squeaky door or, um, or people cheering or something in the background. And we'll be going over these editing techniques for you next week. But remember, you need to write those into your uh, script and you also will need to have gathered them ahead of time to be able to write them into your script. Um, your script will be four to eight minutes long. So you're going to write the whole thing with your narration and figure out how long the sound bites will be that you're going to be putting in there of your at least three people. Um, you can figure a little bit, three or four seconds for every time you use natural sound or a music transition. And all of that should come to four to eight minutes long. So you're going to tell a significant lengthy story. In addition to the script that you're going to write, you're also going to need to write a two to three sentence introduction to the story. Some writing tips when you're writing, think about how you can use that natural sound to tell the story. Think about how you can describe what things look like when you were at the location. You're going to be describing a scene to really make people feel like they're seeing what you, what you saw. You want to organize your natural sound and your sound bites in a way that really tell a story, maybe in a chronological way. So when you pick those sound bites and you copy, maybe copy and paste uh, the transcriptions on your script, think about how it makes sense in a logical way to be telling the story. When you have finished writing your script, um, you're going to be submitting it by Sunday at midnight both the script that's going to be edited eventually and that introduction sentence. After you have submitted this assignment, I'm going to be taking a look at your scripts. I'm going to make edits and recommendations for how you could fix the script, maybe change it just a little bit to make sure that it flows nicely. And then next week in our lecture next Monday, I'm going to be going over how you physically edit what you have written. And then next week's assignment will be editing what you have written this week. So for this week, remember, you're going to set up and do your interviews as soon as possible because that's a lot to get done by Friday. You want to get it all interviewed and recorded and logged by Friday. And that gives you the weekend to go over your logging notes and use those to write your story. Feel free to complete any of these assignments that I've given you before the actual deadlines but make sure you do get them in by the deadlines because meeting deadlines, of course, is an important part of grading for this course. As always, if you have any questions, I know it's a lot that I went over, email me at any time and I'd be glad to go with you step by step over any of the parts that you don't understand. Okay, enjoy yourself and get to work as soon as you can.